you are hardwired. Life is a comedy for those who think, and a tragedy for those who feel. Horace Walpole. We have three major parts of our brain, and therefore three different types of thought. Basal ganglia controls our animal instincts, our reaction to fear, our fight and flight mode, our breeding and choosing a mate, migration, our desires, and our territorial nature. The limbic system is the next step up in the brain's hierarchy, and it controls our emotions. These emotions amplify our animal instincts. We love deeper, we fight harder, we run faster. Our pleasure is actually found here. In fact, scientists have tested on rats, cats, and monkeys that if stimulated, they would forego any other activity, including sleeping or eating, for stimulation of pleasure. The first two portions of the brain do not learn or ever change, and there are no value judgments. The neocortex is our thinking brain. It can override other parts of the brain. This is the part that thinks through ideas or problems. The higher the IQ, the more control the neocortex has. Also, emotional intelligence is important to self-motivate, control impulses, regulate moods, self-awareness, and delay gratification. But at the end of the day, the limbic system is the one that's really in charge, your emotional system. It's faster than the neocortex, and that's your gut reaction that you feel. It regulates the amplitude of our emotions. Sometimes it actually overrides our rational brain. If you've ever been involved in an argument and you feel like this energy coming up, that's, that's your limbic system taking control over your brain. And that's when you need to step away from the situation before you say things that you don't necessarily mean. And it overrides the neocortex with its primal urges. The limbic system can and very often does override the, the neocortex when the brain feels threatened. In the end, rational logic is a slave to irrational emotion. The limbic system has three fundamental motivations, power, affiliation, and achievement. And it can be the desire to move towards power, affiliation, and achievement, or the fear of losing power, affiliation, and achievement. To give you an example, these are what are our main drivers for most people. There's some people who are desire power. They, they seek influence and control. They seek to control their world. And this is a, a very small group of people who, uh, these are like the alpha, alpha dogs that are, that are in your world. These are the, uh, the men who run businesses and, you know, moving towards uh, controlling their world. I would say majority of the population, the, the desire for affiliation, love, acceptance, and this is more of the common people. They, they want to, uh, you know, befriend with people and, and have strong families. And then there's a, another group of people who desire achievement. They want personal goals. They, they want to graduate college. They want to climb mountains. That's their motivation. But there's three distinct motivations. But far more powerful than the desire towards these uh, motivations is the fear of losing. More people are afraid of losing power or social status than actually moving forward in their lives or being rejected by society or actually losing a loved one as opposed to getting a new loved one or becoming more friendly with other people. And there's also fear of losing achievement, failure, or loss of wealth. Fear is far more powerful than desire. And those that use fear to motivate them are unstoppable. It is not because the truth is too difficult to see that we make mistakes. We make mistakes because the easiest and most comfortable course for us is to seek insight where it accords with our emotions, especially selfish ones. And that's Alexander Solzhenitsyn.